Hello, friends at FX Street. Welcome back. I'm Jennifer, and I have uh, session number four prepared to share with you about trading with the MACD. If you haven't uh, been able to see session one, two, and three, I hope you'll look for those recording pages um, because I'm building out some ideas that are going to um, sort of grow on each other. So it's important that you get the earlier lessons. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we will get right into lesson number four. All right, here we go. All right, so hopefully you um, made it onto my slide presentation. Um, I'm Jennifer, and this is the agenda for session number four. Today I'm gonna teach you a strategy called reverse trigger finger. And it is the, the MACD's signal for when change occurs, bringing about a counter trend move in the market. It can be very um, useful. It's one of the most reliable moves in the market, but sometimes one of the most difficult uh, to find the correct timing for. Um, I'm going to tell you what it means and why it works sometimes and other times not, and some things that you can look for. All right, so let's um, start with a review. Um, it's important to me that you get some things to take away from this um, training session, and I, I do my best to um, to help you make it stick. And one of the best ways I know to make the new information stick is a little um, bit of a review and uh, maybe even a pop quiz. So I have prepared both for you, but here's the review. The MACD's job is to watch for change in the current market conditions. The MACD line is direction, and it's basically a moving average of change. It's watching for change in the, in the marketplace. And in the MACD, um, you'll notice the histogram bars, and those are what I refer to as momentum, momentum bars. And they demonstrate the current market movement relative to what the market was just doing a little while ago. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna break that down a little better for you today. The signal line follows the MACD line, providing constant comparison in current MACD movements to previous MACD movement. So um, constant comparison gives us an idea when there's a change in the market. Um, if uh, this is a review and if all of this information is new to you, I would encourage you to go back and listen to the previous lessons. So here is your pop quiz. If you're watching the recording, you might even want to pause the recording and see if you can answer these questions before we carry forward. Um, so question number one, how do you dis divide the space on your chart into three distinct areas of price action? And what is the significance? And that comes from the previous lesson. Question number two, in which one of those three spaces is price comfortable and lacking decision for direction? Question number three, momentum is expected to show up when price is in what position relative to the two combo lines? And question number four, What's a combo hopper? All right, if you were in the last session, you probably got the answers to those questions, but I'll review them with you here. How do you divide the space on your chart into three distinct areas of price action? Well, you apply two moving averages. I apply the 50 and the 100 simple moving average to my charts. I call those the combo lines. They divide the space into three areas the area above both lines, the area between both lines, and the area below both lines. The significance is you can have specific expectations about market behavior when price is in one of those three distinct spaces. The combo lines give you immediate context to price action. This is a review of the last session, and if any of this is not familiar to you, I would encourage you to go back and review one of those um, previous recordings. Question number two, in which one of those three spaces is price comfortable and lacking decision for direction? The answer is in between the combo lines, in between the moving averages, I call that the inside range and price is very comfortable. There's no decision for direction in that space. Momentum is expected to show up when price is in what position relative to the two combo lines? And the answer is after spending some time in between the, the lines, when price crosses one of the combo lines, it demonstrates a decision for direction has been made and we expect to see momentum in that point in time on our charts and then the last question what's a combo hopper it's simply when price is making a move away from both lines at the same time the MACD is making a hopper it's a good opportunity for a new trade um, so that's a setup that I shared with you last time today we're going to talk about the reverse trigger finger it's the MACD's counter trend signal 
And um, so we'll get right into the lesson and break it down a little further. By the time we get through seven sessions, you're going to be an expert on how to use the MACD in ways that you never knew before. I hope I can share some new ideas with you here. So we're looking at the MACD line here. And we're looking for the MACD line and the signal line to be distant from the zero level. Let's see if I, oops, I'm trying to see how I can get my, my little pointer, but uh, apparently I can't get my pointer today. All right, so no laser pointer, we'll do without it. Number one, uh, we're looking for the MACD line and the signal line to be distant from zero. So this red line here um, that I'm pointing to is the, the zero level. And so if you can imagine the MACD line and the signal line being far away from zero, that's, that's the first step. And then number two, when the MACD line crosses the signal line going towards zero, that's what we're going to talk about today. It's called a reverse trigger finger, and it signals a move against the current market direction. Very simple little, little setup here. This is the MACD window. The MACD lines are distant from the zero level, and the MACD line crosses its signal line going towards home, going towards zero. That is the counter trend signal that we're going to talk about today, and it's called the reverse trigger finger. All right, so here is the promised academic lesson. I always have a one-page academic lesson for you. And today, it's the reverse trigger finger signal. So to start, think about what the lines of the MACD are doing. The signal line is a moving average of the MACD line. And as such, it shows us what MACD was doing on average over the past nine bars. Um, when it's doing something different, the MACD line is going to gap away from the signal line. The signal line is going to show us what it was doing. And the MACD line is showing us what it's doing now. And when there's, when there's a gap between those two lines, we know we have something happening. When there's no change in the market condition, and the market is basically doing the same thing right now that it was doing a little while ago, those two lines are going to be right on top of each other. It could be that the market is in a steady trend, and those lines come closer and closer together. Or it could be that the market move has um, gone into some sideways consolidation. Or it even could be somewhat of a pullback off the um, impulse that was pushing the market forward in one direction. So it could be a lot of different things. Um, but when there's no change in the market from what it was doing, um, and all of a sudden it's doing just the same thing, not, not really doing anything at all, those two lines are going to be right on top of each other. Don't worry, I'm going to show you what that looks like. When something starts to happen again, the MACD lines, the MACD line gaps away from the signal line, demonstrating that that fast line that the MACD is watching is bolting again. And when that fast line is bolting, we know we have something going on in the market. All right, so the difference between fading and counter and a counter trend to signal. This is a really important distinction. There is a difference between fading momentum, momentum that's just sort of um, dissipating, right? Just disappearing out of the market, and, and an actual counter trend signal. Uh, just because the, the momentum that was pushing the market in a certain direction is slowing down doesn't mean the market's going to instantly turn around. But when the market does turn around, that's a counter trend you know, move that traders want to be alerted to. So I want to make the distinction here. Fading momentum is when the histogram bars are shrinking back towards zero, and the MACD line and the signal line are getting closer together. They're converging closer and closer together. It means that, that whatever was driving the market and whatever move was on, it, it's slowing down. And that move is either stopping or slowing down, um, or you know, it's over. <laughs> OK? And so the the two lines are going to converge closer together. That's fading momentum, shrinking, and, and the histogram bars are going to be seen shrinking back towards zero. When the MACD line does more than converge towards the signal line, when it actually crosses the signal line and starts gapping away from it, it produces histogram bars that are building from zero. And this is demonstrating that there is momentum in that particular market move. And that includes the counter trend direction. All right, so um, we're talking a little bit here about convergence and divergence between the MACD line and the signal line. Convergence is when the MACD line and the signal line are coming closer together. Now, it could be that the MACD line was actually moving towards the signal line, or it could be that the MACD line is just holding one, sol one solid steady level, and over time, the signal line comes to meet it. Okay, so that's convergence. It could be a couple of different things. But divergence is when the MACD line gaps away from the signal line, and that can only mean one thing, momentum. There's an imp 
important. There's an immediate and significant change in price that causes the fast line to bolt away from the slow line. Momentum. It can only mean one thing. So when to, when convergence is happening and those lines are coming together, a lot of different things could be happening. Either either it's a pullback or a slight, you know, consolidation or just things are slowing down. But if that MACD line gaps away from the signal line, it can only mean one thing and you don't want to miss it. It means momentum. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. All right. So in this example where I have the yellow highlighted area, the, um, the MACD line and the signal line are sort of converging. They're sort of coming closer together and uh, kind of going a little bit sideways. They might even come to a point where they touch. But as opposed to this area where the MACD line gaps away, it breaks away from that signal line. This is um, momentum. Uh, it, it, this is momentum for the counter tr trend signal. Okay, it's a it's a signal for a market move with momentum against the current direction in the market. And the difference in the histogram bars is here we have the histogram bars building from zero, getting longer and longer and longer and longer and longer from zero as that MACD line gaps away from the signal line because a because a move is happening with momentum. Versus right here where the yellow highlighted area is, the the MACD histogram bars are fading shorter and shorter. They're shrinking shrinking back to zero. Okay, it started to grow a little bit, but then it's shrinking back to zero as the MACD line comes closer and closer to the signal line. This is not momentum. This is momentum. When it builds away from, you know, starts from zero and builds from there, it's momentum for that direction. When it's already away from zero and it's just shrinking back towards the zero level, that is fading momentum and that is not momentum. So big difference. And um, the reason why is because the MACD line is bolting away from the signal line, giving you um, this visual demonstration that we have an actual move happening. And with that, we get the, the, uh, the signal for momentum in that point, in that moment in time, because the MACD lines are building from zero. If the MACD lines are fading back to zero, not momentum. Okay, hopefully I drove that point home. Let's look at some charts. Um, here we had an uptrending market. The market was in, working an uptrending pattern for a length of time. At some point, the trend fails to progress, and the MACD line and the signal line are close together. Okay, so at some point, the, the trend fails to progress. The MACD line and the signal line are kind of coming closer together, right on top of each other, um, you know, really struggling to make a move. But at this point in time, when the MACD line crosses the signal line going towards home, going towards zero, um, it's gapping away from the signal line as it heads towards zero. This is a reverse trigger finger and it signals that we have a counter trend move happening with momentum. All right, here's the next example. This market is choppy, but still working the upward direction, progressing to higher highs. All right, so we can see we got a higher high, although it's choppy, we got another higher high, although it's choppy, we got another higher high. Um, the MACD line and the signal line, you know, are close together as there's not much change in the market environment. But when the market stops making higher highs, it's likely we're going to see the MACD gap away from that red signal line going down towards zero. This is the reverse trigger finger counter trend signal to watch for. So in this example, wanting to know when you might sell the next pullback, having the MACD cross through the signal line we're going to have histogram bars building from zero and that is that is a, a distinct difference between uh, momentum that's just fading out of the market and price action might actually not be following and a move that's happening with momentum where you can expect that we have something happening in the market that's tradable. MACD made a reverse trigger finger in this example signaling a counter trend trade opportunity the MACD line and the signal line were distant from the zero level. So down here um, at, the, at the bottom, you can see that the MACD lines uh, are very far away from the zero level. So that's the first thing to kind of look for. Um, and then I also note that the downtrend market had kind of failed to progress for a while. It got to a point where it stopped making lower and lower lows for several bars. And um, this, is, this is my clue that when the MACD line crosses the zero line, it is the reverse trigger finger signal. It's the counter trend signal. And it's it's showing us that there is momentum in that counter trend direction as opposed to just momentum kind of fading out of the market as the market goes sideways or just takes a break. Another one, the downtrend failed to progress. 
and the MACD made a reverse trigger finger signal, signaling that the counter trend pullback, it, you know, was in this market was ready to happen. So we had a downtrending activity. Uh, the MACD line crosses the signal line going towards zero. That is the counter trend signal from the MACD. It tells you we have not only a change in direction, but we have momentum with that change in direction, and it helps us get a good point of entry for that counter trend uh, move. It's a signal from the MACD for a point of entry with momentum that's against the current market direction. All right, so hopefully you got a few examples to work with there, and I'm going to tell you about why it works sometimes and sometimes not. You know, you might think sometimes we see the, the reverse trigger finger happen, and um, and the market's not really ready to go into that pullback. And um, you know, why would the counter trend trade sometimes go very well and sometimes not? So I want to talk about that. <laughs> um, I'm not afraid of that question. Um, here are some things to keep in mind. You are trading against the trend. Now, while the pullback is a 100% guaranteed move in the market, it's definitely going to happen, 100% guarantee. Whether or not the trend is going to continue is uncertain. But whether or not the trend is going to make a pullback is 100% guarantee. But the, but the difficult part is timing. If you get it wrong, you're going to get creamed. So the simplest way to know the trend is ready to pull back is to identify failure to progress. If the trend stops making higher highs or lower lows, then you want to get ready. The market will either progress that trend or it's going to go into that pullback. And when it fails to do one, you can kind of be ready for the other. That's just a little trading tip that you can write down. Down. If the MACD lines are distant from zero, chances are good the reverse trigger finger will take that MACD line back to its home base, back to zero. And lastly, if the MACD has already made a couple of failed reverse trigger fingers, then it actually increases you know, the, the chances that that next one is going to take hold. Okay, so just a few tips to keep in mind, and here is kind of what that looks like. Each one of these reverse trigger fingers signaled a period that the market was pulling back off this trend. They were all good for some pips, but the last one had the highest probability of success because number one, there were already two failed, well, and I call them failed reverse trigger fingers because the MACD line didn't make it all the way home. And so that happened once and then it happened again. And then this last time it happened, we got it to, to make a nice long run all the way home. And so this last one had the highest pop probability because we already saw it fail twice. We know that that increases the chances that the next one's going to take hold. And not only that, but the MACD lines were distant from the zero line. And, um, and that is, is a, a good sign for a reverse trigger finger that's ready to, to pull back with some good momentum there for you. Reverse trigger finger signals during a range. Now, this is not just for the trending markets. How awesome. You can use the MACD's counter trend signal to help you trade a ranging market, too. Reverse trigger finger is the MACD telling you that the market's making a swing in the opposite direction, and that with momentum. Really great information. Why? When the MACD line gaps away from the signal line, momentum is present. There's only one way we get divergence, and that's when there's a move on right now. So it's a great, it's a very strong um, signal, and it and it works very well for um, a range trader that is swinging, watching the market swing uh, in the opposite direction as it works through a range. So we can um, see the reverse trigger finger can be very useful for scalper, scalpers and also for swing traders. Let's talk about that. Tight ranges might be traded on a short-term chart by traders wishing to capture very small profits at a time. I'm thinking of the five-minute charts during the first couple of hours of either the European or the active U.S. trading sessions when the market's moving enough to really trade, even if it's not trending. The wider ranges might be traded by the swing trader who's looking for the market to move hundreds of pips through a wide range of prices on a four-hour chart or a daily chart. The MACD reverse trigger finger signal is very useful when you know there's going to be no progression of the trend and you're looking for the trade that swings back in the opposite direction. I have a name for this. I call this the outside range when the market is not progressing the trend but, the, but it makes these swings that can cover hundreds of pips as the market ranges above 
both combo lines, both moving averages, and then below both moving averages, and then below above, and then below. And it's really not progressing the high or the low at all. So whether you're a scalper looking for very tiny um, pieces of action, or you're a swing trader that's looking for something that's got um, a, a little more space going on, that reverse trigger finger um, signal is incredibly useful for helping you pinpoint the those swings when they happen with the likelihood of momentum. So here are some examples of both of those things. This is the five minute chart with a very tight range and you see we get a reverse trigger finger that sort of alerts us to some momentum in that opposite direction um, from, from the previous direction. And it gets us into a trading position a little sooner than the hopper. So it's this is a really nice addition to the hopper. Uh, in this instance, we got a um, reverse trigger finger taking us back to the zero line from above. We get a reverse trigger finger taking us back to the zero line from below and so forth. And it just rattles off all of these um, turns in the market with momentum um, that would be very, very, um, very good day for a scalper. And here's my personal favorite on the four hour charts. This is what I call an outside range pattern. It's when the mat, it's when price is above both combo lines, both moving averages, and then below both lines, and then above both lines, et cetera. In this example, we had 460 pip range, no progression of a trend in either direction. Even though it moves for 460 pips in one direction, I do not call that a trend. And I'm looking for some help from the MACD um, to get me in on those um, reversals when the market swings back the other way with momentum. Every one of these reverse trigger finger signals, um, signals of time, a point in time with momentum where the market is taking off and doing something, turned on a dime and really moved with momentum. And sometimes you get these, um, these great uh, swinging um, market opportunities um, for hundreds, not hundreds, hundreds of pips, but numerous swings from high to low. And that reverse trigger finger is hot. Of course, I have a button that will help automate that when you can see it coming, um, which I'll tell you about in a minute. So what to look for. The MACD lines need to be distant from the zero line. If the MACD lines are sitting right on top of the zero line, that reverse trigger finger signal is not going to do you too much good. But this is indicating that the current trending activity or that current swing in one direction has been going on long enough or far enough that the odds are in your favor that the market's going to be ready for a reversal. If you've identified a trend, watch for signs of failure in that trend, failure to progress. When the trend can no longer trend, when it can no longer progress, it will eventually retrace. It has no choice and the MACD is going to help you pinpoint timing for that pullback or that uh, retracement phase. If you've identified a ranging market, look for the reverse trigger finger signal to alert you when the market's making a swing in the opposite direction. All right, so of course I want you to use the button. Um, the button is going to be available. In fact, I was going to announce tonight that it's available right now, um, but my web hosting company is working on the server and apparently my website is down. <laughs> so I will have to um, give you that information um, in, in the next webinar. But if you're interested in the button, you can email me at combo traders at gmail.com. That doesn't have to go through my server, so I'll get it immediately, and I will get you the information because the button is available for my friends at FX Street um, as of today. Um, great timing for the web hosting company to decide they wanted to work on my site, <laughs> on my server. Anyways, back to the button, the reverse trigger finger button. It's a perfect time to use automation with the advantage of your own discretion because you're looking for extremes you know, you're seeing that the trend is failing to progress or you're seeing a, a wide swinging outside range and you know that it's going to swing turning back on a dime. And when you have the ability to click on automation in those moments, you're going to get the best possible timing for getting your trade opened or just getting your trade opened automatically so you don't have to sit there and watch for it. So it's the button I'm talking about now. It's a program that runs on MetaTrader 4 and it will be available as of today as soon as my website's back online. <laughs> Um, so real-time settings um, has quite a few settings that are going to give you a lot of control over this automation of this particular button. It allows you to decide if you want the button program to wait for a closed price bar before it opens your trade. Um, so if you're working on a longer time frame chart, you might want to do that. Or if you want the trade to open as soon as the signal happens, um, you can set that real-time setting to either true or false so that you have some control over what the program can do. Um, it, it can open your reverse trigger 
finger trade with a stop loss and profit target in place or not, whatever you want. You can use the MACD close button, which is another button, as the profit target so that when, when that MACD line gets back to zero, it'll close the trade automatically for you. Um, Etc. It's just got all kinds of things that it does for you. Best of all, when you know that you want the next reverse trigger finger, which is the counter trend trade, the counter trend move, you click on the button and then you can walk away. You won't miss the trade and it's really the best of automation. It's automation right when you want it. So here's a word of encouragement. When you have some money in the bag, close the bag. It's, it's true, the hopper strategies tell us nothing about the potential or duration of a trade setup, but I can't think of another strategy that does. <laughs> so this isn't necessarily bad news, it's just good to know. The way you make money in this industry is to close the bag on your trade when your trade is profitable. So I'm giving a pitch for that. Um, the way you, uh, you make money is to close the bag when your trade is profitable. Set up your trades with some automation and the plan doesn't get changed, you know, you get to an easy profit target that you previously established and then your trade gets closed as opposed to sitting there thinking that maybe you should keep it open a little longer and risking having all those profits slip right out of the bag before you have a chance to capture them. That's another reason why um, the button program has been so helpful to us and to me who trades it. All right, so here's the review on what we talked about tonight. It's the reverse trigger finger. It's the counter trend signal. It's the MACD's counter trend signal. Here it is, MACD counter trend signal happens when the MACD line crosses the signal line going towards zero. The signal line shows us what the MACD line was doing just a little while ago. When there's a change, for example, when the market starts moving with momentum, then the MACD line is gonna gap away from the signal line. There's a difference between fading momentum and an actual counter trend signal. When the MACD gaps away from the signal line, it means momentum is on. The histogram bars are building from zero. When the market movement just slows down, the MACD line and the signal line come closer together. The histogram, histogram bars shrink back towards zero. This is not momentum. See the difference? All right, the MACD tells you the story with convergence and divergence of those two MACD lines that you can see. When the MACD line and the signal line are coming closer together, that's convergence. And it could be a pause in the market or even a slight pullback. But what I can tell you is it is not momentum. But divergence is when the MACD line gaps away from the signal line. That can only mean one thing. It means momentum. There is an immediate and significant change in price that causes the fast line to bolt away from the slow line, and the MACD tells you the story. Um, so that is it for the lesson on the reverse trigger finger coming up next time. We're going to add a little math. Um, stop loss and profit target techniques that work. I have... Um, uh, there's a there's a distance that is easy for any market to accomplish and I have a mathematical way to figure that out so I'm going to share that with you next time add this add that distance to your profit target planning or for your stop loss planning and you add a little math to your decision making it's pretty great uh, when you can do that all right so that's the end of tonight's uh, lesson this is session number four thank you for being here thank you for viewing the recording and you can find me um, by email at combo traders at gmail.com. My website is simplycombo.com. My website is down tonight, but it will be up shortly. So that is all I have for tonight. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and see if there are any questions that I can answer before I let you go. All right. Okay, I'm just going to check this out real quick. Give me one second. My lines follow my bars. They are not away from the bars. I'm not really sure what you mean, Fred. Can you ask me that another way? My lines follow my bars. They are not away from the bars. Um, I'll try to figure that out, but I'll give you a minute to see if, if you're still here. Maybe you can ask that in another way. And King is sharing that uh, he had a four-hour um, pound trade yesterday when the MACD line made the hopper signal. 
and the histogram bars moved to zero, it worked perfect. Well, there you go, the fourth session, and I've already got somebody reporting that they've taken a successful hopper trade. How fantastic is that? Thank you for sharing that, King, and I couldn't be more pleased um, that that was your experience. Um, Great. Okay. Well, I hope you do have a chance to watch the previous videos because um, I'm trying to build out a few ideas for you. Um, and it's all about the MACD and understanding the MACD. And little by little, you break it down. And when it makes sense to you, you remember it. And then when the MACD is sitting on the bottom of your charts, you're smarter than everyone else because you actually understand what it's showing you. Everything about everything you need to know for trading direction, momentum, and the need for the passage of time, the difference between momentum and fading. I mean, these are huge ideas on a very simple looking indicator that is freely available. I don't know what could be better. So it's my pleasure to teach you what I've learned about it and um, my hope that it helps you trade a little bit better. I also have automated the MACD strategies and I have a program available for sale. If you um, check back with me on the next time when my website's back up, uh, I'll be able to show that to you. But um, thanks for joining me live tonight. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening and I'll see you on Monday. Have a great day, everybody.